Welcome again, YouTubers, to another review video. Today, I'm going to be talking about Star Wars Rogue One. It is the latest installment in the Star Wars franchise. This one right here, this is a inquel. I don't know if it's quite a prequel or a sequel. We're going to call it an inquel, okay? This is a movie that takes place between Episode 3 and Episode 4. Basically right before Episode 4, A New Hope. So that's really exciting. We finally get to figure out some of the cool stuff that has been lingering in the Star Wars multiverse for quite a long time. I am a huge Star Wars nerd. I have been since I was like 8 or 9. I've been like diverting some of my nerdiness into other categories like I just talked about. But Star Wars has always been a love of mine. I have a Darth Vader lightsaber just hanging right above my sink right now because I just love it so much. Now this movie, I was a little bit scared. I was afraid when I saw the trailers that it wasn't gonna be that good, but damn it, if I was wrong, Rogue One was really good. I had pretty much all positive comments. I had one or two things that annoyed me a little bit, and I'm gonna talk about it in that format. Instead of me reviewing it, going through the plot, talking about these different characters, instead I'm gonna talk about the things that I liked and some of the things that I didn't like as much. So, minor spoilers for this video, for sure. If you haven't seen it, um, you're gonna be spoiled a little bit, but not really. I'm not gonna get too far into details. Instead, I'm gonna talk to you about some of the things that are cool that aren't pivotal to the plot. However, if you have seen Star Wars A New Hope, I would imagine you would have a pretty good idea of what the plot is for this movie, or at least what the ending is. First thing I loved, I love the introduction of new stormtroopers. It was in the past, we've only had a few different troopers we could check out. We really had like basic, what, stormtrooper and also a scout trooper. That's pretty much it for the most part. Now, what we can instead see is we add two more at the very least, which is an Imperial Death Trooper, and we also got a Scarif Trooper. It was just a nice to add to the repertoire, and we're also seeing different vehicles being thrown in there. We see another variation of the TIE Fighter, which I think is really a variation of the TIE Interceptor, but still, it's cool to see a little bit different stuff coming into this film. For me, maybe the best part of the movie was seeing Grand Moff Tarkin brought back to life. This is a guy that was in episode four, you know, he was the one that was really the leader of the Death Star and seeing him on screen, I was like, oh my God. And then I had to sit there in the theater the whole time going, one of two things is happening. And I don't know which one it is, but they either digitally fix this dude up to make it look like he's alive still, or two, there is another beautiful unicorn on this planet that looks exactly like the guy who played Grand Moff Tarkin. He was great to have in the role. He almost was a spot on. I really loved having him expanded on a little bit because in the first movie, we only saw him for a tiny bit, episode four. In this one, it was nice to see a little bit more stuff from him, just as badass as always. Another one, the addition of droid K2SO. Now this is an Imperial droid that was reprogrammed by the Rebel Alliance to make him a big ally of the group. And I have to say, it was great. He did a lot of cool things. He was kicking Aish everywhere with his bare hands, with weapons, anything. But the most important part was he interjected some humor into the plot for sure. And now as much as I love all the stuff that he did, he's gonna be part of my cons list as well. So I'll expand upon that a little bit later down in that list. For me, a really big part of the movie that was good was they didn't make it an underlying love story. Like it wasn't throughout the whole film, it was like, okay, well, we're really trying to do this mission. And then at the very end, oh, we love each other, mom, 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 mom. No, they didn't do that, thankfully. There was like a hint of it, but not really. And I was really glad to make sure that didn't happen in Rogue One. Another thing, the new characters were uniquely awesome. We're talking about this blind guy with blue eyes. We're talking about the dude with a giant bazooka. Jane Erso, Cassie and Andor, like all this different stuff. We're glad to have these new characters because they're uniquely kind of cool. Like I'm glad for this movie that they were actually tossed in because they all provided their own little thing. And it was just, I don't know, it was a nice change of pace. Also, Cassie and Andor, the main male lead in the movie, that guy reminds me a lot of Oberyn Martell. Like a Diet Coke of Oberyn Martell. Like, a lot shorter, and he had some mannerisms that matched Oberyn. So that was pretty fascinating for me as a Game of Thrones fan. And lastly, the addition of Darth Vader in the film. Now, I knew Darth Vader was gonna be in it because he was in the trailers, and also they made a Funko Pop figure of Darth Vader in the film. So I was like, all right, we're definitely gonna see some of him. But man, there was way more Darth Vader than I thought there would be, which I thought there'd be a tiny bit, but there actually ended up being like this much instead of this much. So that really made me happy as a big Star Wars fan, and it pretty much wiped away the taste at the very end of the awfulness that is Anakin Skywalker and how much that little brat hates sand. Now we're gonna jump to the part of the list where I don't like the movie as much. 
Now we're gonna go back to K2SO, the droid that I love so much in that film. The things that make me love him are the reason why I have a problem with him. In the greater expanse of the Star Wars films, I don't think he fits in and I think his appearance actually did the rest of the series a disservice. And what I mean by that is, this character was so OP. The droid was just unfair competition for every other droid that we're probably gonna see. I mean, who are the main stars droid-wise of Star Wars? You got R2-D2, C-3PO, BB-8, and now K2SO. BB-8 and R2-D2 might as well be like the same droid, okay? R2-D2 was formerly known as the bad asteroid, okay? That's because he had like rocket engines and could quickly encode things. And then you have C-3PO who was kind of the comic relief annoying droid. K2SO encapsulated pretty much all of those things and it just seemed like it was too much. You know, like he was way too important of a character. He, had, he was a really fast droid. I don't know any of them with great reflexes. Like it was crazy. So I think for a singular film, he was great, but for the greater Star Wars universe, he probably did a disservice because he makes the other droids that we've loved for years look like crap. The only other thing I was really disappointed in, I was really let down by the ending. Mainly because, and this is all about the hype machine, my friends had told me that the ending is insane. And when I saw the movie, I was sitting there, I'm like, okay, waiting for the ending, how's it gonna go? I'm waiting for the twist. But since I'm a really big Star Wars fan, I knew what was about to happen. First of all, you should have a pretty good idea of what was gonna happen based off of episode four, A New Hope. Whatever goes down in the beginning of that movie should be roughly how Rogue One ends since it bumps up against it for the most part. So using that in my context clues, I figured out pretty much what was gonna happen. Now it happened a little bit differently than expected, but it didn't blow my mind. I was so bummed out, I was expecting like a big shock and that didn't happen. So I was really bummed out about that. So overall, not many complaints about the movie at all. Those are actually really minor, of course, but at different points in the movie, I, my face was just going when it came to K2SO, because I was like, I don't know, that's like too much, I think. But by far, the most important thing that came from this film, and I say this for the very end, because I think it is incredibly important that we leave with this note. We find out why on God's green earth that they made such a terrible flaw in the Death Star. All these years we've been sitting there as Star Wars fans, we've been saying, so why did they leave this giant hole in the Death Star? And when I say giant, it's actually not that big relative to the Death Star, but big enough to have a little fighter pilot destroy the whole thing, okay? <laughs> so we've been trying to figure out why that happened, and thankfully this movie finally gave us the answer as to why such a great flaw was built into the Death Star. And I'm not gonna tell you why, because I want you to go see the movie and find out for yourself. But that is definitely the most impactful thing that happened. It made sense, I dug it a whole lot, and it was really cool. So now when you watch the movies, one, two, three, Rogue One, four, five, six, it's really gonna come together in a really pleasing way, I think. Now that we don't have to do those mental backflips of logic, when we go like, oh, they built a huge Death Star that's gonna destroy planets. But for some reason when they built it, they couldn't figure out that this little hole was gonna destroy the whole thing. Now we understand what the deal is. But that's gonna do it for the video. Thank you so much for watching as always. I hope you go and check out Rogue One pretty soon because it is another really good film for Star Wars. And I believe the next Star Wars Episode Eight comes out next December. So that'll be really cool for everyone. In addition to um, a few more spinoffs, I think they're doing a Boba Fett and also a Han Solo. So that'll be really awesome. Now remember to enter my 10,000 subscriber giveaway. I'm giving away some cool stuff. There's a Star Wars item in there, some Game of Thrones, Walking Dead, all kinds of cool things. Make sure you check those out. And if you wanna get galactic, there's also some Guardians of the Galaxy in there as well. And of course, check out my other videos. I got some of them right here. And remember always to subscribe to my videos if you would like to see anything more from me. Otherwise, hope you have an amazing day. Happy holidays, take care, goodbye.